So here we are, Mr. Sutton bringing you lesson three of our trig equation series. In this one, we're going to be using reciprocal and Pythagorean identities to solve even more difficult trig equations than the last one. And for our real life payoff here, students will be able to figure out when two students have the same test grades. Stay tuned. So we'll just dive in with a, a quote unquote real life situation. So let's say that the exam scores for two students can be modeled using these trig functions below. So student one, y equals two sine of x cosine of x. Um, that is looking like this. So apparently these exams, the highest you can get is a one, and boy, don't you feel bad if you score a negative one on this test. Student two is just the tan function here. Um, this is what those patterns for test exams look like. We want to figure out at what times these students have the same grades. Um, so basically we're asking if we put these graphs on the same axes, like so, where would they overlap? Which we can figure out by setting these two functions equal to each other. And now, of course, the question is, where do we go from here? We have not one, not two, but three trig functions in the same equation. So here's the tricky situation we're faced with. We have three different trig functions. Not much is going to get done until we start getting rid of some of those different functions. One thing we can do um, when all hope is lost, we saw when we were dealing with identities, is to turn everything into sine and cosine. Tangent, for example, is really sine over cosine. In fact, if you think about it, there's really only two trig functions, sine and cosine, and everything else is just some kind of fraction with one or both of those in it. So at this point, if you have a fraction in an equation, one thing we're allowed to do to get rid of the fraction is multiply everything by that denominator. So if we multiply both sides by cosine of x, on the left side, that'll be 2 sine x cosine squared of x. On the right, the cosines are going to cancel, leaving us with just sine of x. It's tempting at this point to move the sine over to the left and start factoring. Um, even before we do that, though, we could go a little further. You've got this squared trig function here. Now, you might remember Pythagorean identities all have squared trig functions in them. The one that would be most helpful here, can you remember it? Yeah, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if you want to get cosine squared by itself in that identity, you just do 1 minus sine squared. So we can now substitute 1 minus sine squared for the cosine squared here. Make sure you use a parentheses when you do this. Um, but look at what we've done now. We started with three trig functions. Now we only have one. So at this point, it's just a matter of ba doing basic normal algebra um, using sine of x instead of just regular x. So distributing this two, we've got 2 sine of x minus 2 sine cubed of x equals sine of x. And you could move the sine of x over here. Um, that's going to leave you with a negative cubic term, though. Just to make our lives easier, I like to have my leading higher degree terms positive. So I'm going to add the 2 sine cubed over here. And I'm also going to subtract 2 sine of x over here. That'll leave me with positive 2 sine cubed of x minus sine of x equals 0. And we're out of space on this page, so we're going to just punt to the next slide of this presentation. Continuing now with what we had on our last page, we can factor out a sine of x. That'll leave us with 2 sine squared minus 1 inside. So that means we're going to have sine equals 0. And let's actually take care of this branch before we do this other piece here. Um, so where on the unit circle is the y value going to be 0? Well, that happens at the left and the right side, so 0 degrees and 180 degrees. All right, let's take care of this other branch now. This one's a little bit more involved. So we have uh, 2 sine squared of x minus 1 equals 0. We add the 1 and divide by 2. We've got sine squared of x equals 1 half. We're now going to have to square root both sides. So the square root of 1 over 2, that's really a 1 over radical 2. Rationalizing that, multiplying it by radical 2 over itself, we're going to have radical 2 over 2. And we're also going to have the negative version of that, because again, you are square rooting an equation, so we need the plus or minus. All right, let's take this first branch. Um, this is one of your special angles, special values. The sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Um, so you didn't have to use a calculator here, but you could have. And 45 degrees, as luck would have it, is a reference angle unto itself. Um, so this is one of our answers and also a reference angle for getting our second answer. 
Where else is sine positive other than quadrant one? Oh, quadrant two. So 45 degrees in quadrant two, that's going to be 180 minus 45, which is 135. All right, let's do our second branch. Um, so this is just going to be the negative version of 45. So negative 45. And since our answer has to be between 0 and 360, let's add 360 to that to get the quadrant 4 version of that. And that's going to be 315 degrees. Um, now our reference angle is going to be 45 degrees. Sine is also negative in quadrant 3. So we're going to do 180 plus 45 to get 225 degrees for our final answer. So that's six different answers we got out of this. Now we have to be careful. Our original equation had a tangent in it. So let's just quickly double check our answers so that none of them make that undefined. Tangents undefined at 90 and 270 degrees. Since we don't have those angles for any of our answers here, um, we're good and we can go on to the next problem. Here's another equation. Pause the video and try this one on your own. See how far you can get. Now right away you notice we have two different trig functions in here and also one of them is a squared trig function. So again, you should be thinking Pythagorean identities when you see this situation. Now the Pythagorean identity that would help us here is, is again sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If you do 1 minus cosine squared, you get something equivalent to sine squared. So we can substitute 1 minus cosine squared for this first term. And you don't really need a parentheses because it's the very first thing. Now we just need to rearrange this. We've got all cosines. Um, so we ought to be able to turn this into kind of a trig quadratic and factor it like we did in the last lesson. So let's move the cosine squared over to the right and add the 3 cosine and then subtract the 1. Um, so we'll have cosine squared plus 3 cosine plus 2. Now we need two things that multiply to 2 and add up to 3, um, just 1 and 2. So we can say cosine of theta plus 1 and cosine of theta plus 2. So that means that cosine is going to equal negative 1, or cosine of theta could equal negative 2. Well, this is the x value on the unit circle. Where is the x value equal to negative 1? Oh, that would be 180 degrees. That's the only place that happens. Um, so that's one of our answers. Over here, where is the x value on the unit circle equal to negative 2? Well, the unit circle, being the unit circle, only goes 1 in every direction. You don't have any x value of negative 2. Um, so this is just a dead-end branch. Sometimes we get those, and 180 is our only solution. We're going to do one more problem here, and, and this one is especially tricky if you've never seen this type of problem before. We've got sine minus cosine. It, it looks so simple, but that's a problem because we can't make it any simpler looking, or at least it appears that way. You've got only sine and cosine. There's no squared trig functions. Like, the world is falling apart for us here on such an easy-looking problem. Really, the only thing that we can think to do, maybe, is add cosine to the other side. Um, but now once you've done that, you could divide both sides by cosine, or at least that's, it seems like it should be a possibility. Sine over cosine would give us tangent, and cosine over cosine would give us one, and, and you know, tangent equals one. We can deal with that situation. The question is, are we allowed to divide by cosine? Now normally we are not allowed to divide by trig functions, um, but not just because you know, that's the rule and we, we don't question it. The reason we're not allowed to divide by trig functions is because trig functions might have a value of zero. And then if you divide by them, you're basically dividing by zero, which is a huge no-no. However, in this situation, if somebody objects to us dividing by cosine because it might have a value of zero, then what they are also saying is that sine of x must have a value of zero. I mean, these two functions are equal to each other, right? Um, so if someone says, no, no, can't divide by cosine, that might be zero, they also have to say that sine of x is zero. And let's think about this now. Can the sine and cosine of an angle both be zero at the same time? The sine is the y value. The cosine is the x value. You can't have zero comma zero as the point that your angle is reaching on the unit circle because zero, zero is not on the unit circle. Um, so since the sine and the cosine of an angle can't both be zero at the same time, and, and they would have to be here for either of them to be zero, we are allowed to divide by cosine. So doing that, we have sine over cosine, which we know is tangent, 
And now we just have to find the inverse tan of 1. Now what is the inverse tangent of 1? Um, this is a good one to memorize. If you don't use a calculator, that's going to be 45 degrees. And then that's also a reference angle. Tangent's also positive in quadrant 3. Um, so we have 180 plus 45, which is 225 degrees. And one more little thing on this has to be in radians. Um, but these you can easily convert to radians. So this is just going to be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And there we have it. So that's it for uh, Pythagorean theorem identity and reciprocal identity trigonometric equations. We'll do one more round of trig equations. Until then, this is Mr. Sutton signing off.